Hello everyone, Transport Enthusiast here and in this OMC2 tutorial video what I am going to do is I am going to show you how to start up a tram in OMC2 Now, the tram we will be looking at in this video is the Tramcar T6M 700 and this is probably the most complicated tram to start up and get moving in this OMC2 customer maker which is also the tram simulator so if you know how to start this tram, you should be able to drive other trams in thing too. However, if there are any other trams you would like me to do a tutorial on, do let me know that in the comment section and I'll certainly do that for you. So the first thing we want to do is we need to raise the pantograph, which is this yoke here. So the way we raise the pantograph is by pressing E. Now if we raise it, press E once, it's going to raise it to this level. So we need to press E three times in order to fully raise it, so we press E twice and then the final third time and now we can see that the pantograph is connected with the overhead wires now one thing to note is that on some tram maps the overhead wires and the pantograph may not line up this is not important as the pantograph is purely for aesthetic and simulation purposes which basically means that even if the pantograph isn't aligned it actually makes no difference because it doesn't actually get the power from the overhead wires in the game the overhead wires in the game are just aesthetic so even if you load the tram up on a railway without overhead wires, it will still move, as this is just for the visuals. Okay, so with that out of the way, once we've done that, the next thing we need to do is we need to turn on our low voltage and high voltage. So the way we do this is we flick this switch for up, and we flick this switch to the right. And then the next thing we do is we press and hold M for 4 seconds. No, sorry, so actually what M does is, uh, that's not true, so M uh, lowers the pantograph and then E raises the pantograph, so scratch the last bit, so M is just to lower the pantograph when you're switching the tram off. The next thing we do is, once we've turned on the voltages, is we need to uh, listen, get, we need to put the thing in drive, so the way we do that is we click the D, so now it's in drive, we release the handbrake, like so, and then we need to move this arrow to the 9 o'clock position, which is these two dots. Nope, sorry. Uh, oops. We moved that slightly too much. Okay, so once this is at 9 o'clock, this means that the engine is disengaged, so it's basically in neutral. So the things we need to bear in mind is here is that from these two dots to this dot is movement. Basically, means that if you have this arrow pointing at any point along this uh, arc, that means that the tram will be in movement, and obviously, the closer you get towards this point here, the faster the tram will move. Anything between these two dots and here is stopping, so obviously, the further away the arrow goes from these two dots means the harsher the brakes will be applied. And then, obviously, when we go here, it means it's in neutral, so the brakes are disengaged and the tram is ready to move. So, what we want to do is, in order to get this tram moving, we want to click 8, so 8 moves this um, lever or bar rotational lever which then moves this, so take a look here, we, move, we click 8 once as you can see, now the tram is moving and obviously if you want to increase the speed, you just click 8 again and the speed is increased now here we're going to have to stop, so what we do is we press 2 and 2 again, so now it's in neutral, so we're coasting and then we just click 2, the brakes are being applied one thing to note is that we need to use the handbrake to stop the tram and the reason for this is because on this tram model and um, once you're below 5 km an hour you need to stop it with the handbrake so the brakes are purely to, so the wheel brakes or these brakes here are purely to slow the tram down whilst the handbrake is to bring it to a full stop so what that means is once we've stopped we're going to click push 8 we'll be at the 9 o'clock position we're going to wait for our signal we're free to go, we release the handbrake, we press 8 again and then we can move off. So that means that basically the handbrake has three positions. It has released, also it has engaged fully, which means the tram is parked. It has uh, engaged a uh, second engagement, which basically means the tram is stopped. Not yet, it means the tram is stopped and then it can move off and it's fully released. As you can see here now, our tram is moving. So, operational wise, it's fairly easy to move these charms. The important part is just to understand the different points on this circumference here. That's 
video, that's all there is to it. And then also if you want to pick up your line number, this will be a line number here. This says ZA Depot, which means it's to the depot. Uh, check this off, we don't need that. Now if you want to increase speed, this is going to be 8, 8, 8, and this is the maximum. This will be the most speed, so you don't want to go past that point. And then if you want to slow this down, this will take 2. That will close it, and that will stop it. Here's your big starship. And then we just click 888 and then we have it on neutral. And that's really it. That's how you drive this charm. And then you can switch it off by disengaging the low voltage and the high voltage and by engaging the handbrake and by putting this point here to stopping or spearing it. So just here. And then you can switch off the pantograph. And that's really it. That's how you drive this charm in OMC2 and then also the doors the doors uh, the way you open the doors is you use the minus sign symbol so it's um, basically it's usually the button that's used for the bus stop break and then they'll do that and also the bell is the hash it's the it's the star so if you want to say you open the doors and we want to warn the passengers the doors are closing the lights will light up you just press the Star sign is usually the door that's used to, it's usually the, the keypad that's or the key button that's used to open the second doors and then we just close them like that. Um, and before I finish off this video, uh, one final thing I want to mention is just going to quickly uh, let you go, uh, quickly just gonna go over what this tram model is because I'm sure for most of people uh, they probably won't, we won't know what this uh, where this tram model comes from or any details about it as this is really a domestic tram model so what I mean by that is that this tram model uh, is only in use in one country and that would be Bulgaria in the capital city Sofia so probably most people who haven't been to Sofia or haven't read the read readme of the game will not know um, basically won't know what this uh, not know anything about this tram so this tram basically is a Bulgarian made tram so it is made, it was, they were constructed in Bulgaria in the late 1900s. I think they're currently being withdrawn, they're being replaced by PESA 122 NASFW charms, slowly but surely. And um, these charms actually in real life are narrow gauge. So at the moment you can see this track here is standard gauge. So standard gauge is the track width that is used on the heavy rail, uh, <coughs> heavily rail uh, short Europe. And it's also what is used on most uh, modern light railway services. So most of Western Europe that have recently begun regurgitating tramways and building new tram lines or light rail lines use standard gauge. And the reason for that is obviously it offers greater capacity. However, in a lot of Eastern Europe, like Latvia, Bulgaria, Poland, etc., um, <clears throat> what has happened is that in the past most of the tram network was built in narrow gauge as this meant that the tram tracks took up less space on the road and it just means that uh, basically it was using, using up less road space that's really the main thing to it so in real life this tram is narrow gauge however in OMSI 2 this is standard gauge and the reason for that is because most tram lines in OMSI 2 actually and I think every tram line in OMSI 2 is standard gauge there's no narrow gauge line so therefore obviously if this tram was narrow gauge it wouldn't be drivable however what you may notice is that um, the wheels are not aligned with the track and this is because I think the wheels have been maintained to narrow gauge length so that is why the wheels don't align with the tracks because actually this is narrow gauge so it's never mind the charm is the charm has been modeled as narrow gauge so what that means it doesn't actually align with the tracks so that's why so if you're wondering why it doesn't align with the tracks basically it's because it's a narrow gauge tram rather than a standard gauge tram so that's how you start this tram up and if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful don't forget to give it a like if there are any other channels you'd like to know how to start up do let me know in the comment section down below and i've also ha left the link to this charm in the description and this charm is basically made by probably the, the most uh, prominent charm model of omc2 as the same developer has also created the Tatra t685 so as you know there's about five charms available for omc2 so this was this developer has created two of them links in the description those of you who want to download it and then obviously if you want to see more videos don't forget to hit that subscribe button that's it for now until next time